Okay, so we're going to look at um, this graph. This is a classic graph you hear or see a lot of the time and see what's going on here. So first, it's Mauna Loa, Hawaii. So if you Google where Mauna Loa is, it's on the big island of Hawaii. And the Hawaiian islands are literally in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So they're a very remote location. And the reason that um, they decided to do a monitoring station all the way out in Hawaii is that it's isolated. So if there's, um, and it's up at really kind of at the top of a mountain, so it's not going to be impacted by like a lot of uh, industrial development or things like that. It's in the middle of the ocean, so it's going to be, again, a lot of air currents mixing the air. And so the idea is you would get a good general sampling that happens. So why did they choose that location? It's remote, so local impacts, and this green is too light, so I'll change it, um, don't impact it. That's really why they um, decided to go with that. So um, it's remoteness is part of why it's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And so then you'll notice there is the graph. And if you look at it, it has kind of this variation here. I'll actually do this. It kind of does this up, down, up, down, up, down sort of thing there. Uh, and so why is it then that we see this up, down variation in this. And so that up-down variation is actually, and it tells us in the prompt, the seasonal variation. So seasonal variation is going to be this up-down nature of it. And so, but this is in the middle of the ocean. It's actually fairly, it's north of the equator, uh, but it's fairly near the equator where you're not going to have as much seasonal variation, but still there is seasonal variation. And again, if the goal is a remote place, so it's not necessarily impacted by local conditions, why do we see this seasonal variation? Again, global air circulates. So if it's summer in the Northern hemisphere, it's winter in the, um, it's gonna be winter in the Southern hemisphere. Here's the big thing with this, all right, is it has to do with this global air circulation. So in the Northern hemisphere, there is more land, okay? And so when it is summer, so summer in the Northern Hemisphere, there is more, oh, my favorite thing, more photosynthesis happening. So CO2 levels go down, okay? In the Southern Hemisphere, you might say it's having winter. However, in the Southern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere is more water and so you're going to have um, kind of that water covering that you're still going to have that circulation and you're still going to have essentially like a plankton and things like that floating in that water so there's still going to be that photosynthesis happening even if it is uh it cold so the southern hemisphere because it's more water um, it still has a good amount of photosynthesis happening, happening, okay, oops, happening, oh. okay, so what I love about this question prompt is there's a lot going on here. One, it's this idea of the seasonal variation, so I go back to stuff about photosynthesis and respiration, so I have to remember those equations, and remember photosynthesis reduces CO2, respiration increases CO2. Respiration is always happening. Photosynthesis is happening when the sun is out um, and when there's plants out, so like in the summer, um, on terrestrial biomes. But aquatic biomes, again, that plankton is gonna be able to circulate um, unless it's ice covered fully. But again, you're gonna be able to have that circulate. So I look at photosynthesis and respiration. I'm looking at this idea of the Northern hemisphere and Southern hemisphere and seasons and the seasonal variation, and I'm connecting all these ideas. So even though we see this variation, this up and down variation, we notice overall this trend going up. So that is the significant thing we're gonna see from this graph. But again, it's a good review of a lot of different concepts and why CO2 levels uh, can vary over the course of a year. CO2 trends.